the American Broadcasting Company Radio Network presents Space Patrol. High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol. In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy are on Neptune, following the criminal Ralph Bolger into a deserted factory building. An invisibility transmitter concealed outside enables them to trail Bolger through the solid walls of a huge metal tank. Oh, it sure is dark in here. Now the chance to close in on Bolger when you step through the other side of the tank, Russian. Yes, sir. Hey! Oh. <laughs> Commander, the wall is solid. We can't get through. Something happened to the invisibility field transmitter. We're sealed inside the tank. We'll be back in a moment with the thrilling story, Escape from Neptune. The children in American families will receive things like bikes, canes, dolls, books for Christmas. But there are many children in the world today who would be happy if they had enough to eat on Christmas Day. Thousands of children in Europe, Asia, South America, the Philippines, and Korea are suffering from inadequate food, lack of clothing, and cramped living quarters. Include these children on your gift list. For one dollar, CARE will send 28 pounds of food abroad in your name to an orphanage or a needy family. If you can spare more than one dollar, fine. Send your contribution to Food Crusade, CARE, C-A-R-E, CARE, New York, to any local CARE office or to CARE through any railway express agency. And now today's Space Patrol adventure, Escape from Neptune. For several weeks, a feeling of insecurity and fear has been spreading throughout the United States. Despite the relentless efforts of Commander Corey and the Space Patrol, a master criminal continues to strike where he pleases, under the protection of an electronic device that renders him invisible. At the present moment, the criminal, Ralph Bolger, is making use of a temporarily inactive factory building in the capital city of the planet Neptune. Bolger stands glowering down at an elderly man who lies exhausted on a crude bike. You had enough rest, Rayburn. Get back to work. I, I can't work anymore, Bolger. I'm completely worn out. Let me alone, please. Now you listen to me. I've got to have another invisibility field transmitter right away. I only got one before he captured the other one. Now get up and into the workshop. I had enough of your stubborn attitude. If you think Corey is going to rescue you, forget it. The space patrol isn't even looking for you. That's, that's not true. Well, isn't it? Corey thinks I stole your invisibility equipment, and then I got rid of you. Um, that is right. Your life depends on one thing, Graver. Your usefulness to me. Now, get busy and finish the transmitter. I couldn't leave him if I was. Why not? There's not enough, my bone. Just to let you see the invisibility. Now just tell me where to get it. It's not like ordinary materials. We just can't go out and buy it or steal it. It's to be manufactured. Made from one of the rare earths under tremendous heat and pressure. I've never made more than five pounds of this stuff. How much of that five pounds have you used? Come on, tell me! about three and a half pounds of vibronium in existence. Perhaps, but I don't know where it is. Who worked with you on that invention? No. Don't lie to me! A moment ago, you said, we never made more than five pounds of that stuff. Now, who is we? It was some time ago. I don't remember. I've had a lot of different assistance over the years. I did tell me you don't remember who worked with you on an invention as important as this. Bring the assistance of yours here to Neptune City. No, you can't do that. You are going to write a letter. It's the only way you can save your life. In his central office at Space Patrol headquarters on Terra, Commander Corey cuts off the intercom and 
Burns just about half. Half that list of former associates, Professor Rayburn, have you got a hand in? Yes, sir. It's right here. You can cross off number 23. 23. That's, uh... Oh, that's uh, Lanine Harvey. Yes. Out of a whole list of 40 people, she's the only one who's been interested in that call. Do you have any yeah. So far, the best we've got is a note from a former student that saw Professor Rayburn three years ago. How do you do? How do you do, Miss Please sit down. Thank you, Commander. I'll tell you why I came here. I received this letter yesterday. It's in Professor Raven's handwriting. Tell no one about this. And it won't. Same here. Are you sure this is his handwriting? Positive. Part of his table is hang out. Yes, I do. I was in dress in that same city. I memorized it and then tore it off in the Do you know anything about the fact that the Professor's invisibility field transmitters have been used in a series of times? Oh, no. Miss Harvey, the Professor's life is in danger. If you follow the instructions in that letter, you can lead us to Ralph Bowyer and possibly save the professor's life. But at the risk of your own. Well, that's the alternative. Let us address that incident. Let us try to surprise you. But you'd be more sure of success if I help. Is that it? Yes. With a concealed miniature space explorer, you can let us know the layout. It looks like our village is off down. All right, Commander. I'll keep the appointment. I warn you that you'll be in considerable danger, Miss Harvey. I know. But if I go to Neptune City, I'll be in danger of a certain time and place. If I don't go, I'll never be safe anywhere or any time. Until Bojo's capture, it's clear of all. Thank you, Miss Harvey. I'll get a minute to space again for you, then you can proceed to Neptune City. In his hideout in Neptune City, Ralph Bojo received a space again call from Chip Getford, one of his agents on the We'll be on the green car special. Has she contacted anyone? I don't think so. Spent a couple of hours in the scientific library. Came out a different exit than I was in the library. How long? Not more than 20 minutes. I picked her up again on Terra Boulevard, the United Planet Park. Yeah, I guess he's right near Space Patrol headquarters. Yeah, not as convinced. And she should have visited the headquarters. Might have, but, but she didn't act like it. It's a brilliant remark, Gessner. Just how does a person behave? After he has been space patrol headquarters, is there something different about him? Well, no. What I meant was... Listen, Gettner. We are going to change our plans slightly. If Lanin Harvey talks to Corey, he may be watching that address here in Neptune City. So well, what? You'll be invisible and so will I be. Corey has one of those steel transmitters. We'll have to get the girl before she gets to that address. Uh, can you get to Neptune before she dies? Sure. If I blast off right away... Well, do that. I'll put the invisibility transmitter in the surface part and meet you at Neptune City Spaceport. We'll grab the girl before she gets anywhere near the place where she expects to meet Rayburn. Several hours later, a surface car moves slowly along the street in Neptune City. Both the car and the two men in it are invisible to the throngs along the busy thoroughfare. Moreover, the field generated by the transmitter enables them to pass through matter in its normal state. Thus, the stream of traffic is completely unaware of the existence of the invisible car and its occupants. Slow down a little, Gettner. The girl is stopping to look in the store window. Uh-huh. Moving on now, she's heading right toward the car. Stop the car. So do not touch that field transmitter. It's set just the way I want it. Several blocks away and near the address given them by Lenin Harvey, Buzz and Happy keep close watch on an apartment building through electronic spectacles. Like Bojo and Gettner, they too are in a surface car made invisible by an ultra vibration transmitter. Miss Harvey should be here pretty soon, isn't it? Yes. I remember her. We don't move until she's inside and has a chance to let us make a setup. I suppose Bojo stays with her and doesn't give her a chance to use the space again. We can tell a lot by the time we see her. We still know how many we've got to find. 
the target. She's in trouble now. Well, you're stuck in there and expect her to find out where she is. Help me. Help me, someone. Oh, you want to try to see you again. I told you. You're hurting me. Then stop jumping. Come on, get into the car. You must have grabbed her right on the street. Going down, let's go have. Yes, sir. Protected by the invisibility field, Buzz and Happy drive to the deserted factory building at Draco and Gamma. Their electronic spectacles enable them to see another car perform the amazing feat of passing through a solid fence. Swiftly, Buzz adjusts the field of their own transmitter. Then he and Happy get out of the car. There's Bojo, and he's got Miss Harvey. I had him tell the building. But there was another man in the car. I was going to hit him. I saw it. It's outside Bojo, and he's going to get him. And the man in the car can't see us. He can see the young man. I can't expect it. So what he's got to do is follow Bojo and the girl. Hey, come on. Bojo's carrying his portable transmitter into the building. Well, there they go, right through the wall. I think I'm half keeping him safe. When he stepped to the wall, he'd be ready to rush Bojo. He's leading him toward that big storage tank. They're walking right through the tank. It's sure dark in here. When he stepped through the other side of the tank, rush Bojo. Yes, sir. It's solid. We can't get through. Something happened to the invisibility field transmitter. We're sealed inside the tank. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. The United States has seen many changes in the past dozen years, all pointing to a still better way of living. Millions more Americans are working, earning more, saving more. We're eating more and eating better. More young people are going to high school and college. More of us are getting paid vacations. More of us are enjoying the luxuries of life. Sports, radio, television, the theater, concerts. Church attendance and membership has climbed steadily upward. In addition to these material and spiritual changes have come the miracles of jet propulsion, supersonic flight, antibiotics. The better you know America, the better the future looks. Write for the free book, The Future of America, Box 1776, Grand Central Station, New York 17. <laughs> Now back to today's Space Patrol adventure, Escape from Neptune. Ralph Boger and his accomplice, Chip Gettner, have captured Lenine Harvey and have taken her to a deserted factory in Neptune City where they intend to force her to build invisibility field transmitters. Buzz and Happy were following Boger and his captive through the metal walls of a huge storage tank. Suddenly, the electronic field was cut off and the Space Patrollers found themselves sealed inside the tank. Now in another part of the factory building, Ralph Bojo unlocks the door and thrusts Lenine into a room. Get in there! Lenine? It's a rape. You two probably have a lot to talk about. So I'll leave you together for a while. Of course, you will write that letter, Lenine. I understand. And there is something else you are going to understand. Both of you. You are here for just one purpose. To build invisibility transmitters. I will be back in a few minutes. I think 
get happy when they're with me. But tonight's night. But the July for some time, I must have left off. Yes, the tank can be filled with gas. There's a compression chamber next to the tank filled with chemicals. Chemicals? That's deadly poison. Oh, it doesn't occur to Bolivar to turn that down. He's, he's done it. I saw him all the way the tank. I think of the valve as he walked past. I didn't think about it. How much time have you got? Time. Yes, to save the commander. I can survive 10 or 15 minutes, perhaps. I can't get out of this room. I, I know I tried it. But we've got the fuel tank here. It's no good without the belts. We couldn't walk through the wall unless we were wearing belts with the control units turned on. The commander and the cadet are wearing belts. That's how they got me the tank in the first place. If we could focus the field toward yeah. them. It's worth a try. Quick, Professor. Turn on the transmitter. How long have we been trapped here, sir? About ten minutes, I'd say. It seems like hours. It was 1540 when we pulled up outside the factory, and now it's... <coughs> hey, sir, I can't even see the dial on my watch. It's so dark. The dial's luminous. Happy you should be able to... I can't see my watch either. Maybe the gas has affected our eyes. Yeah. Have you got your electronic goggles on? No, sir. You slipped them up in my forehead. Now I can see the watch. It's 1552. We couldn't see the dial because we're inside an invisibility field. Somebody turned on a transmitter. Maybe we can get out of here. On your feet, have quick. Take a look for Bolger. We'll hide behind that stack of supplies to him. Can you make it? I don't think so. Well, relax, huh? Uh-huh. I hope we got it focused right, Professor. I think so. The trouble is, in that dark tank, they might not know the field is on. With that gas pouring in. Please, I... Professor. Wait. You're spaceable. You can tell them. Why didn't we think of that before? I did think of it. I didn't dare turn it on unless Bolger and his partner are here with me. Yes, I see what you mean. If they have space at home, they happen to be near the commander. Your voice would give away the whole thing. Someone's coming. What about the field transmitter? Keep it on. So you see, Lenin, all I did was devise circuits to combine and control the effects you and I discovered years ago. Well, well, I'm glad to see you have decided to cooperate. Wait a minute. Is that thing on? I was merely it... demonstrating to Miss Harvey the, the sequence of operations. Shut control. it off, quick! Of course. Did you say so? I wouldn't want the field to penetrate the storage tank. Although it wouldn't make any difference now. Well, what do you mean? You didn't know it, Miss Harvey, but Commander Corey and to that happy are in the tank. You'll never be troubled by Corey again. Did you go inside the tank? <laughs> With all the poisonous gas in there? Don't be foolish. <laughs> now, come with me, both of you. Where are you taking us? We are blasting off for Saturn. Saturn? Gettner has taken the field transmitter out of the commander's car. Now, I will take this one and we will go to the spaceport. But you listen. The professor's very ill. Acceleration of the space flight would be dangerous. Oh. Oh, I never thought of that. Rayburn! Now that we have two complete transmitters as models, uh, do you think Miss Harvey could do the work alone? Answer me! Of course I can. Mm, splendid. Then there is no use taking a useless old man along. You know, let the professor go through. I cannot have him running to the space patrol until we are safely away from Neptune. And this ought to keep him quiet for a few hours. <laughs> Stretching an old man. If you give me any trouble, Miss Harvey, you will get the same treatment. Now, let's go. You lock the door. I have a ray gun in one hand and the transmitter in the other. You can't lock him in here. He'll never get out. Oh, the space patrol will probably find him in a few hours when they come looking for Cory. Now, do as you're told. Come on. Gettner is waiting in the car. 
fully recovered from their ordeal in the storage tank, Buzz and Happy carefully searched the factory building. That place seems unnaturally quiet, sir. I am here in visibility for a while. I think Bojan is now probably took their two factories and got around. I've been hoping our space phones would come to life with a message from Miss Carver. I just want to have a cover of the radio. Yes, sir. Uh, it's locked. Uh, Smoking rockets. That's a raven. Commander. Yes, sir. Lenine. They're taking her to Saturn. Bojo and Getna. They thought you were in the tank. They've taken Lenine to Saturn. Here on Saturn. I don't know. Professor, did Miss Harvey mention the miniature space of Yes. But she still has. She she didn't. Bojo took her away. She was afraid to use it. Professor will take you to a hospital. And you'll blast off with Saturn. With Professor Rayburn safely in a doctor's care, Buzz and Happy rushed to the Terra 5 and launched themselves into space toward the planet Saturn. Not a sign of a ship in the viewscope, sir. Or you might have made a ship invisible. Well, then how are we ever going to find them? We probably won't find them out in space. But after they land on Saturn, they'll have to shut off that transmitter sometime. And every city on Saturn has been alerted. Attention, any space soldiers. This is an emergency. It's Miss Harvey. You can clear up that signal, huh? Yes, sir. Space patrol unit. We must be close to Bojo's ship to pick up that signal. Turn the space phone transmitter that special frequency. Commander Corey calling Lenine Harvey. Commander Corey calling Lenine Harvey. Commander, you're alive. Yes, thanks to you. Professor Rayburn told us how you focused the beam on the storage tank. Professor, is he all right? Yes, he's resting at Neptune City Hospital. Now, let's see what we can do about you. You're in Bojo's ship, right? Yes, and now compartment on the starboard side. I hope they can't hear the space phone. No, not unless they suspect something and tune to this special frequency. I have to get a fix on the mean signal. Yes, sir. Bojo's ship is invisible, I suppose. Yes. They're headed for Saturn. That's all I know. Well, just follow these instructions and we'll be able to find you. Hold your space phone against the bulkhead of your compartment. Then you'll be transmitting the vibrations of the rocket exhaust. You'll follow the signal and overtake the ship. Yes, Commander. But then what? The field on the two ships is entirely different types of matter. I'll put on a space suit and jump from this ship to Bojo's. Once I'm inside the invisibility field, my vibration rate will be the same as yours. Yes, that's true. And I can come in through the airlock. With an atomic torch, if necessary. Commander, if something goes wrong... We've talked long enough, Miss Harvey. Put the space phone against the bulkhead. All right, Commander. And good luck. I've got a fix, Commander. We're gaining on Bojer. Good. Keep the ship on course, Happen. I'll get into a space suit. I tell you, Bojer, that that's Corey's ship. That's Corey's ship, all right. But that doesn't mean he's in it. The space patrol probably searched the factory and found old man Rayburn. He tells them we're headed for Saturn. Or he's still in the tank. Maybe. Look at that ship. If it was any closer, it would pass right through it. What if it does? This is a different state of matter than we are. See? Now, shooting clear ahead of us. <laughs> if the pilot only knew how close he came to us. There's still something funny about it. With all of empty space to fly in, that ship followed us like a dog chasing a rabbit to a hollow log. Oh, it is strange. But obviously, no one in the ship saw him. Eh, in a few minutes, it will be out of sight. Bojo. Mm. That girl back there. I suppose she could have signaled a space patrol? Uh, how could she? She's locked up. I'm going back after to make sure. All right, good man. Something funny's going on here. I can feel it. What are you doing? I'm looking. You're hiding something. Hold your hands out in front of you. I said, hold your hands out. Oh, you're hurting me. Let me see those hands. Well, that's how Corey's ship follows. When I get through with you, you won't be able to move, let alone talk. Let go of her, Captain. Uh, Commander. The Lockwood fighting in a spacesuit. I'll take it off before I go up after Bojo. Can I do anything to help? Yes. Get getting his ray gun keep an eye on him. When I get out of this suit, we'll lock him in the compartment. Well, 
you getting there? Did you and Miss Harvey had a nice chat? How is our charming prisoner? Just fine, thanks. Yeah, that's good. And as you can see, that other ship is... Hurry! Get away from those controls. Uh, oh, Jeff. Uh, get her! Help! Uh, get... Uh, 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 Lord, please, I, I had enough. I swear, I swear, told you. We're saving a couple to pay you for those ten minutes of your time. Commander Corey calling Cadet Happy. Commander Corey calling Cadet Happy. Happy here, sir. Everything's under control at this end. Set a vector to return to Neptune City. I'll bring in Gettner and Bolton. Very good, sir. I still can't see you in the view scope. I'll cut off the invisibility field. Now, how's that? Fine, sir. Uh, how's Lenine? Okay. He's back aft guarding Gettner. Bolton's up here, but he's not saying that. I guess he finally realizes that this is the end of his career as the invisible man. Well, not quite, sir. Where he's going, nobody's going to see him for a long time. <laughs> a preview of next week's Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. Boys and girls, we have a special announcement. Buzz and Happy with the Space Patrol group have just made some exciting records on the planet Terra, telling of their early adventures in the Space Patrol. How Buzz Corey became Commander-in-Chief and the thrilling story that made him choose Happy as his personal cadet. The records have been flown to Earth in the Terra Five, and you can get them at your favorite record counter. Just ask for the Space Patrol Adventure Story. And now a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz is at the controls of a strange spaceship in another galaxy, with Happy nearby in the Terra Five. In contact by miniature space phone, they plan the rescue of a fellow space patrol pilot. That enemy ship is gaining on Northfield, Commander. If I pulled ahead now, maybe I could draw him off. No, Happy, get you and Northfield both. I stand a better chance than you because I'm in an enemy ship. That's great. He'll think you're his buddy. Stick close, Happy, as though the Terra 5 were still captured. Yes, sir. If we can keep that guy fooled for a few minutes more, we can rescue Northfield. Uh-oh. Hey, Commander, this is terrible. What is it, Happy? I just picked up the enemy commander's space phone channel. He knows we've escaped. He just gave that enemy pilot orders to blast both our ships. Be with us next week for the thrilling Space Patrol story, The Lost Galaxy. Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kemmer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Luke Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Helen Moser. Other players were Virginia Hewitt, Bella Kovach, and Ken Mayer. Lee Zimmer speaking. Don't forget to tune in next Saturday at the same time for exciting adventure on Space Patrol. This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.